Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of top stories today. Tremendously powerful storm. So look at science news around the world and into as deep of space as you get. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com for the only calm news of the whole day. Southern coronal holes visible there. There are no sunspots and absolutely no solar flaring. X-ray flux is flatlined. Solar wind is calm too, puttering around in low to medium intensity range in geomagnetic conditions, taking a step into even calmer territory. And then there was this. The storms tore through the south yesterday, delivering tornadoes and high winds. Death tolls have been going up every few hours as the cleanup is underway. Here's a look at the lightning detection from GOES and the fantastic unleashing of electricity into the evening and throughout the night. But a potentially matching devastation is unfolding in Mozambique. It has been less than a month since Cyclone Adai attacked the African nation, and it's happening again. The rains and floods are still meandering around the region as deja vu sets in for people reliving a nightmare. And speaking of nightmares, the supervolcano that worries me most is Campi Flegri in Italy. And today we're learning that her cycle of eruptive behavior basically just got cut in half. They knew she blew 15,000 years ago and a bit more than 40,000 years ago, but now they've identified a separate lava field sandwiched between them, hiding there all along and 29,000 years old putting Flegri on more of a 15,000 year or less cycle rather than 25 to 30,000 years, and about due for another event. On to the unusual aurora named Steve. They are discovering that while aspects of the feature are likely normal aurora in that they are precipitating particles ionizing the atmosphere, Steve's linear signature glow is an excited river of electrons floating through the sky above our heads. Quick science fail to point out. A study has demonstrated that human pollution was actually a minor factor in the 2013 Beijing death smog. It was largely due to natural releases and concentration processes. But seeing their unending global warming grant money in jeopardy, they quickly added in that somehow reducing pollution is the key to stopping these natural events. Your logic is flawless. Let's go out to M dwarf star systems and find that their habitability may be less than what was predicted. The high activity of the stars might erase the friendly conditions thought to surround many of those stars and the planets in orbit. Up next, we're going out to the deepest parts of space. Deeper, the red dot in the middle. Quasars sit at the edge of our visibility in deep space and are supposed to serve as marker posts for cosmic distance and position. However, scientists are now discovering that an apparent motion to quasars is actually real. Despite their formation and temporal disconnect from our vantage point, they are still able to provide motion information across all that distance and time. Hubble up next with the Large Magellanic Cloud. And every time Hubble or Planck refines their data, the world of physics cringes because the problems between the Hubble and Planck constants are not meeting resolution. In fact, the latest results take the discrepancy certainty from 3,000 to 1 chances to 100,000 to 1. Physics, we have a problem. Last but not least, if you missed my chat with George Norrie, they've posted a good portion of the show online. Link is below, and we'd appreciate a like on that video, so we're invited back, and a like on this video, because you can't believe how powerful those are in the new algorithms here on YouTube. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 420 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.